It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holds barred between AFC South rivals. It's the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next on Madden NFL 25. Where the Gator Bowl once stood now stands this facility. TIAA Bank Field. As EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Jacksonville, Florida. Joined by a former NFL quarterback up in the booth, Mr. Brock Heward. I'm Kate Scott. And Brock, uh, you can brag if you'd like to because I know you had quite the big arm in your days with the Huskies and the Seahawks in Seattle. Well, we've got a couple of quarterbacks here who also know how to push that football down the field. Yeah, you got a couple QBs who are going to keep these defenses honest today because the moment they get greedy in coverage or get too aggressive in the pocket, either of these quarterbacks can drop a dime, drop a deep throw right mm -hmm. over them for big yardage and maybe six points, too. Kaimi Fairbairn ready to get this one going. And we're underway from Everbank Stadium. Devin Duvernay to return it. He's brought down at what looks like the 24-yard line. So here are the Jaguars taking over for the first time on offense. And bringing them out in his fourth season since arriving as the number one overall pick back in 2021, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence has had a remarkable career. Over 50 starts in high school and a winner all the way along. A national champion and three-year starter at Clemson and really a starter from day one after the first pick in the draft in Jacksonville. The key for Trevor at this level, though, is to do it season in and season out. That's what the greats before him have done. The Brady's, the Manning's, the number one picks of the past. If you want to become a great and you want to take your game to another level, you've got to do it year in and year out. And that's good for a gain of five. Will Anderson Jr. in on the stop. Give him five on that carry, bringing up second and five. Kate, I know you can see that smile on my face as we stand next to each other. Sure, I love that run. But I'm thinking about some great running backs. In fact, Corey Dillon, who created a lot of negative grades on my play sheet because I didn't want to carry out no fake. I wanted to watch the damage he could do like we just saw. And he's going to go out of bounds. Looks a little short of the 35. There's no negatives ever on a grade sheet for a completion, but that's one of those situations. If you're going to take a risk and throw an out route, you'd sure like to see a little bit more yardage gained. One yard, all that's needed. This is third and inches. You're going to try to pick it up with an option left. And he'll go down, and we'll say right at the 39-yard line. He gets six on that play, and that'll be good for a Jacksonville first down. The difference right there, Kate, between that gain and a big hit for a loss, some really quick decision-making. He made a quick read, saw the running back was going to get hit if he handed it, and he pulls it himself for a positive gain. And he does quite a bit of damage before they finally take him down. Now, right there, that's what you want to see on your opening drive. Boom! Connect on a big shot, and instantly you set a tone that you're not going to be afraid to be aggressive in this game today. Boy, do I love that. Thinking touchdown here after that big play. We've got first and ten from the red zone. They motion a receiver left. On first and ten, here's Lawrence. Completed to Davis. And this play reaches the 12-yard line before the stop is made. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. And with third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. From the shotgun, Lawrence. He brings it in. And this one stopped at the three-yard line. A nice gain of eight there, and that brings him to first and goal. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. This drive has been excellent. A few shots now. It's starting with six as they come up on it. First and goal. ETN. Takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. 
The Jaguars finish up an excellent opening series. Travis Etienne, the touchdown. Well, he couldn't ask for a better start to a game than that. The offense taking it all the way down the field and finishing with six. These opening drives, Kate, are such tone setters. It is why every offense loves to script their first 15 plays, right? Everybody knows what's coming. Allows you during the practice week to get into rhythm, but even better when you're that sharp, that crisp, and you finish off and get the early lead. Little able to connect on the point after. And the Jaguars will jump out to a 7-0 lead. On now is Cook to kick this away. Damian Pierce now to return it. His return makes it up to the 25. Well, here come the Texans for their opening drive. And leading them out is someone who became an absolute superstar last year as a rookie. Drafted second in 2023, it's C.J. Stroud. It didn't take long for C.J. Stroud to make an immediate impact into the NFL. And it didn't take long for me, Kate, to form an opinion. But this guy is just different. He just processes the game quicker. Remember talking to Ryan Day on the practice field in Columbus, watching him in college. And he just alluded to that as well. It's the anticipation. It is knowing where everybody is and getting that ball out before any receiver will even break on a route. C.J. was unique in that way. And that skill set has been a big part of his success. We'll head out of bounds after a small game. Kate, I don't know why every once in a while I'll get these little flashbacks, but a little play like that just flashes me back to the preseason, my first preseason. And one of the veteran QBs said, hey, Brock, whatever you do, just find completions. You will never go broke taking a profit. Go get a completion. They're at a premium in this league. Second and eight. That's a catch for Nico Collins. And this one's brought to a halt at about the 36-yard line. It's a pickup of nine yards. And the Texans are going to have a first down. I'm sure coach and play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. They send him left out of the slot. Running for the first time with Joe Nixon. And they try to power it forward, but only a couple of yards there. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet, but if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. From the 38. Dell with the grab. And he'll head out of bounds after a short game. It's not just imperative that a quarterback knows man or zone. Same thing for a receiver, especially on a drag route. When he sees zone coverage like that, just settle down, find the soft spot, and give your quarterback a chance. They come to the line here, and this is third and six. Operating from the gun, it's Stroud. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted, it's gonna be fourth down. So many coaches love third downs and they practice them so much, Kate. Why? Because they're the money down in the NFL. Whether it's a close game already out of hand, coaches know got to execute and convert on these third downs. Hunter takes the field on fourth down and he sends this one flying. And the sunlight's not a problem for him. He looks up and makes the fair catch. No return on that punt. And it'll be Jaguars football. They're out and set, first and ten. Here's ETN to begin the drive. And he's caught after a gain of about two. Derek Stingley putting that play to bed. He gets a couple on first, and they'll come up second and eight. 
You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs against the better defenses in this league. ATN gets it on the draw. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. This is one of those plays that I wish we had the huddle mic'd up, Kate, because I can assure you that offensive line in their own way is telling that running back, sorry, we did not give you any chance. This offense looking to convert as they come up on third down. Out of the gun, Lawrence. He's going to push one deep down the right. And disaster averted. He knocks away the deep ball incomplete. First time this game they've looked to him. And that brings up fourth and long. I don't fault the look downfield at all. I mean, that was just a situation there where it's a better defensive play than the offense executing. On fourth down, it's Logan Cook on for the Jaguars to punt it away. He fields it at his 43. And he's going to get a modest amount on that return before he ends up out of bounds. 58 yards on the punt there. And the Texans are going to take over with their eyes on the end zone. Football on that 47-yard line. First down. Now it's Brown. Completed to Collins. He's got to gain a six there. Play brought to an end by Ronald Darby. I'll tell you this. You don't want to make a living throwing into double coverage, but double coverage and still finding a way to beat the defense and haul it in. That's not a situation many players win. And there aren't a lot of quarterbacks willing to make that throw and trust their receiver to get it done. Shotgun now for Stroud. He's got him. That's Mixon. And they're going to haul him down a step before the 30. You're right at the 31. Give him an even 10 yards on the play. And it sets up a Houston first. Year after year, the best offenses are multifaceted. It's not just the receivers or the tight ends that can make plays through the air. When you get running backs that can attack the middle of the field like that, man, is it difficult on a defense. He's on the move. He can run it. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They rip off a big chunk of field, and it sets him up with first and goal. Obviously, a defense wants to take away all the reads and prevent any kind of big throw for the first down. Fine. Well, this QB, he'll just lower his head and gash the defense with one of the biggest runs of the game. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. They're going to run here. It's Mixon. And he drives forward for a little, maybe to the seven. It's a gain of two on the play. Still some work to do on second and goal. Okay, all right. There's a little progress on first and goal. You keep it safe, you push a little closer, and now you're set up for what you want to do on second down. Again, the give to Mixon. And he'll get this across. Touchdown, Houston. The Texans reach pay dirt for the first time this game. It's a Joe Mixon touchdown. They kept it on the ground as opposed to airing it out. And that time, well, Brock, the ground game paid off. Well, these great rushing attacks down here that could score rushing touchdowns, it takes the whole party getting involved. Yeah, the burst of the running back was tremendous. How about the launch of his blockers right off the line of scrimmage? That's a touchdown the entire way, and it took the entire group offensively. Here's Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Texans tie this game 7-7.
Fairbairn has it all set up for the kickoff. Here's Parker Washington with the return. And in the end, he's able to get it to what used to be a touchback. It's at the 25 after the return. Now the Jaguars' offense ready to take over once more. They were only on the field for three plays their prior series, Brock. Let's see what changes they make to take over here. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Lawrence working from the gun. That is caught by Brian Thomas Jr. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him only to drop your hips and cut right inside. Some good work to help reset those chains. First and 10, it's Lawrence. Throwing the out route complete. And he has it up towards midfield before he's taken down at the 47. One quarter down in this all AFC South contest. Both teams neck and neck so far. Back to Everbank Stadium in just a bit. Back for the second quarter, it's Jaguar football. They're looking at second and pretty short. Inside handoff goes to ETN. And they had that one contained right at the line. Look at Jimmy Ward getting up there to make that stop. It looked like they had it, but nope, no gain. And now they're just inches short for third down. They go right back to ETN. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. That is your old school meat and potatoes call right there. Don't even think about throwing it. Just rush it ahead and get what you need. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Lawrence looking to throw. Complete. It's Ingram. Good little rip there. Looks like about six. Aziz Al Shire that time on the tackle. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bully ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. Lawrence now off the play action. Fits it through the middle. And he'll go down here at the 16. It's a 21-yard gain, and that's a Jaguar first down. This entire play, Kate, depends on how well he can separate from his man. You get man-to-man -man coverage, it's really about two things, separation and trust. Because QBs want to throw it before he breaks, that's the trust, and then they got to believe that that separation can create the big play down the field. Here's Etienne on first down, and he has enough room to gain about four. That is just a good, solid run right there. I know, that's pretty basic commentary, but sometimes football can be basic. It keeps you on schedule. That kind of yards per carry, and you move the sticks. Second and six coming up here. ETN again. And they bring him down pretty quickly at the 10. Give him two on the run. That's going to set him up with third and four. You know, not a ton of yards, but still showing that commitment to the ground game. The type of run that keeps the defense from loading up in coverage and focusing entirely on that passing game. And the Texans go in nickel coverage, third down. Now Lawrence. That heater is going to fall to the turf. You know, it's a point of emphasis in practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? Well, they chose the wrong play off that call sheet that time. Cam Little getting the call on fourth down here to put three up for the Jaguars. A pretty automatic look for him from the left. 
And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that's going to break our tie and give them a three-point advantage. I never saw a play script that ended with a field goal. It was always a touchdown that you wanted. But that's three points, and it's enough to give them the lead. On now is Cook to kick this away. Pierce now on the return. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. Out now come the Texans on offense. They'll try to emphasize what worked on their last drive, which ended Brock in a touchdown. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Stroud off the play fake. Has his man. It's Mixon. Just a couple of yards here as he heads for the sideline. You know, you compare and contrast stats over the decades, Kate. One thing you see is the completion percentages are through the roof. In this day and age, compared to the 60s and the 70s, a big reason is just completions like that. Utilizing every one of your eligible receivers that time, a running back in the flat. From the 30 on second down. Finds him over the middle. And that'll be enough for the first as they touch him down. Sure seems like he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it going right where he wanted to with the ball off the snap. New set of downs for him at the 38. Mix it on the counter. And he stopped after running it up across the 45 to the 46. Good rip on first down. That brings up second and two. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense. I think it feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run in crossing that first down marker. On play action, here's Stroud. And he's brought down right in the neighborhood of that 40-yard line. He picks up 15 on the play. And the Texans are going to have a first down. I know the combine tries to test everything it possibly can physically, but I don't know how you test courage at the combine because there's nobody defending you. Nobody wants to hit you. But that was the epitome of courage to make that in cut and make the catch. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Going right side, mixing with it. And they've got him behind the line for a big loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, He's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Offense to the line for second down. From the gun, Stroud. Throw right side, Dell has it. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. An excellent gain, 20 yards there, and that's gonna move the sticks. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains. There wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. Here's Stroud on first and ten. That one falls to the turf. Couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Making it harder than it needs to be right there. Just get the catch first. Guarantee some yards. And then worry about escaping the defenders and getting upfield. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. They go play action here. Has it at the seven. And they're going to get this down to the four before being stopped. They get 19, and now they're going to have first and goal. They like to say it's about the Jimmys and the Joes. I think that's about the X's and the O's. That's a well-drawn-up completion that nets them a first down.
Might be trying to power this across, Brock. They've got three tight ends out there. It's first and goal. From the red zone now. And he's going to have the touchdown. We'll see if he gets to keep this, though, Brock. We've got some laundry on the field. He was downfield in a hurry, hoping to help with the play, but that effort cost some points as the penalty wipes out that touchdown. We're at the two-minute warning now from Everbank. The Texans with some work to do, trailing in this game. This offense in position now, it's first and goal. To the air yet again, it's Stroud. The bat grabs it. And not quite a touchdown, but he's down to the four before going out. Well, that's a pretty similar result to a first down run play. Moves it forward, keeps you on schedule, and makes second and third down a whole lot easier to manage. Still chances to get these final four yards. It's second and goal. Throwing it again here. And he will score. Touchdown, Houston. The Texans get some late points and the lead. Well, they definitely wanted to get that one out quick, Brock. They did just that, and it ends in six. We hear it all the time, but it is so true, Kate. This is a game about matchups. And when you see a throw that quick, it really was determined pre-snap. It was great design and tremendous execution. Fairbairn now for the PAT. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Texans take a four-point lead. set up for the kickoff. Here's Duvernay on the return. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. Well, we've already seen some nice plays here, and we're going to see plenty more before this game ends. But you might be thinking, with plays like that, my guy's ratings should be better. Well, you're not alone. you got a chance to let the Madden ratings hotline know just what you're thinking. Give him a call. 1-844-MADDEN-1 and make your case for who should get a boost. Drive starts out with a first and 10. From the shotgun, Lawrence. He lofts one deep, center of the field. That one is incomplete, couldn't hang on through the contact. Ryan Thomas Jr., his intended target. So it's second down coming up. You know, that was almost a nice chunk play before he was able to recover and provide the hit that dislodges the football. You like to see that physical edge and scrappiness to contest any kind of shot plays deep. Second and 10, here's Lawrence. That one doesn't find its man incomplete. Hey, Kate, I know it's unrealistic to expect a 100% completion rate from anywhere on the field, but in this close, you really shouldn't be missing too many throws. Those need to be borderline automatic. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Out of the gun to give to ETN. And he's able to maneuver this up past the 30. The defense calls a timeout. So that's their first. As they'll get together and discuss with fourth down coming up. Logan Cook on the punt. And he's getting the call for the second time this game. 
First punt win 45 yards. This looks considerably further. And he's getting nothing on that return. They wrap him up almost at the exact spot that he fielded that punt. The kicking team got downfield quickly there. He didn't manage much on the return. And it's going to be Texans football. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Operating from the gun, it's Stroud. Finds a seam down the middle. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy of midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. They get 20 yards out of the play and move the chains. I love throwing on first down. And when you see a first down pass just like that, it's taking advantage of a matchup you plan for and you go out and execute. One play in and already they're close to midfield. First down, Stroud. Nothing there left side as it ends up incomplete. Well, you certainly want those throws to be automatic. Every team, if you're going to be efficient, you've got to hit those passes in the short to intermediate zone to effectively move the ball in this league. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. Blitz coming for Stroud. Has him on the quick hitter. They'll touch him down a couple of yards away from that marker. Sure showed off some mobility on that play. Got outside the pocket and easily found an open man. All plays on the table here for third and three. Shotgun now for Stroud. Finds him on the slant. And he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. They're now set for first and ten. Shotgun snap. They're going to throw. Completed to Collins. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They rip off a big chunk of field, and it sets him up with first and goal. I think my favorite part was the magic he worked after the catch. The way he took the completion and made so much more out of it by adding all the extra yardage. Now, just before the break, a timeout taken by the offense, and they can try for some points going into the break. Now it's Kaimi Fairbairn on to try it for the Texans. A very short kick here from the right hash. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And add three to their lead as it extends to seven. In that close, kicks have to be automatic. That won't stop the head coach, though, from holding his breath for a couple seconds until he sees it's up and good. Well, Brock Martin, a touchback. This kickoff should run out the half, so better make that return good as it's away. And that's over the 20, the landing zone, and almost everything else. So that football coming out to the 30-yard line. One last play before the break. Looking to throw. He's trying to lay it in deep along the right side. He's got it. Looks like the feet are in bounds, too. Oh, I don't believe it. We've come to halftime. The Texans in unfriendly confines. But hey, they've got the lead. Now we'll keep it in the state, but send you a couple hours away to our buddy in Orlando. It's Jonathan Coachman. He's got our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Kate, thanks very much. And with that, 
We welcome you all into our EA Sports studios. This is the Halftime Report. All right, thank you, Coach. And we are back and about set to begin the second half. On now is Cook to kick this away. Here's Steven Sims with the return. And this drive will start inside the 25. The Texans and C.J. Stroud all set to go for their next drive. They're out and set, first and ten. Throwing his ground. Complete to Dell. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. <laughs> that is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. A jolt to start that drive. They're up near the 45-yard line. Stroud throwing here on first. Schultz with the catch. And he's going to go down right along the midfield strike. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable. and creates space to take that shot downfield. Second and three now. Brown off the play fake. Collins there to grab it. A big 34-yard pick up there. And it sets up a Houston first. He just made a difficult throw to the outside. Look elementary, Kate, and that's not easy. The placement, excellent. And it helps set his target up to put some more yards on that stat sheet. Thinking touchdown here after that big play. We've got first and ten from the red zone. Working inside the red zone. And he can't hang on. Touchdown in his arms. But it slips through. Second down coming up. With how hard it is to get an open look downfield, can't let the coverage off the hook with the drop. Saw open space, started running before he was able to watch the ball into his hands. It's mixed in on second down. And he got what he could there, only to the 14. Give him three that time. That's going to bring up third and seven. trying like mad to do anything to disrupt the rhythm get the QB off his spot it's got to be a massive relief to see their efforts paid off on that play Kaimi Fairbairn out there now to try a field goal for the Texans on this fourth down ball on the right hash for this 36 yard look and it is good no problems there on the shorter attempt and that will push it to double digits in a two-possession game. Well, that's why they spend all the time on the practice field during the week. That kind of operation. Perfect rhythm, perfect timing, and a two-for-two two for this kicker.
Bear Baron has it all set up for the kickoff. Washington now to return. And he's stopped on the return of the 27. The Jacksonville offense back on the field now. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Now Lawrence on the play fake. That one's incomplete. Had the connection, but some stone hands got in the way there. Couldn't find Brian Thomas Jr. on that throw. And that'll bring up second down. Well, that's a major missed opportunity for the offense and a sigh of relief for the defense. Now you got to adjust a little bit, get some extra help on the back end of your defense to take those shots away. Lawrence trying again on second. Davis there to grab it. We'll have him gain about a handful there. That stop coming from Henry To'o To'o. You know what I love to say, you never go broke taking a profit. And you often gain profits when you use your eyes as a quarterback. Those hitch routes, those underneath throws, Oftentimes, it's the eyes of the quarterback looking downfield and then taking that short completion. Third down, Lawrence to throw. That's taken in by ETN. And he's going to get this up close to the 40 before going out. That one ends up a gain of six. And that'll be good for a Jacksonville first down. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. Now a give. It's ETN headed left. And two yards is all he's going to get before he's caught. Kamari Lasseter getting up there to make the stop. He gets a couple on first, and they'll come up second and eight. Lawrence now off the play action. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And they're going to bring him down just on the other side of midfield. That's an 11-yard pickup, and it gives them the first down. Kate, I can promise you, you go back and look at the most efficient offenses in the NFL over the last couple decades, one thing will resonate. You've got to be able to attack the middle of the field. It's great to do it with receivers. It's awesome with tight ends. But when you get that influence from your running backs, man, you become a dangerous offense to stop. And they're all over him again. He's dropped at the line of scrimmage. No gain there that time, and it's second and 10. Stopped right at the line, but might as well have been a loss of yards as far as the offense is concerned. It's always humbling when you try force versus force, and the defense wins out. They're running the option, short side. Oh, he drops a cut to the right sideline. And he's brought down real close to that goal line at the one. They rip off a big chunk of field and it sets him up with first and goal. Hey, forget about it, forget first down. For a moment, they were thinking touchdown on that play. What a time to deliver a breakaway run. And that puts a ton of momentum on their side for the next snap. So after that big play, Brock, they need just that final yard here on first and goal. From the red zone now. And this is caught. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. The Jaguars start the second half with some needed points. Brian Thomas Jr., the touchdown. Right on the edge of the goal line for first and goal. And I don't know about you, partner, but that surprised me that they just threw it in. No attempts at running it. Yeah, I think it is so hard for these defenders. you got to be so keyed in and physically, you know you've got to stop that run first. So a first down pass play can and certainly was effective. On his little for the extra point. The point after splits the uprights. And the Jaguars cut it to a field goal game.
Volley set up, and it's away. Just a three-point game now. Pierce now on the return. And the return sets them up just beyond their own 20. The Texans ready for their next series, let out on offense by their quarterback. And he has continued to own this defense and keep on throwing that football partner, making this performance one that he's going to remember. Uh, but as you like to say, the defense would probably rather forget. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. From the gun, Stroud. Connection made to Dell. And he'll go down after pushing this up to the 29. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable. And it creates that space. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the 29. Has it downfield working the left. He goes the distance. Touchdown, Houston. The Texans make it a nine-point advantage. Nico Collins with the touchdown. So no mistaking that play call, Brock. They send nope. everybody on deep goes, and it winds up paying off. What a play. And you'd think on the other side, defensively, they'd be ready for this. But this is truly a breakdown in the secondary. Mm -hmm. They're just not able to make a play on the ball in the air. And the end result, as you said, a big play and a touchdown. Fairbairn now for the PAT. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Texans make it a 10-point ball game. Fairbairn has it all set up for the kickoff. Here's Duvernay on the return. He stopped on the return at the 27. The Jaguars send Brian Thomas Jr. readying for another drive on offense. And the last time they had it, they ran it down the field on him. I'd expect some better resistance up front if they try that again. Drive starts out with a first and ten. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. From the gun, ETN gets it. And he finds space for about a three-yard gain. Look at Jimmy Ward getting up there to make that stop. Let's see what they draw up on this third and seven. From the shotgun, Lawrence. He's gonna loft one deep to the... That's grabbed inside the 30. And they're gonna take this in for the Jacksonville touchdown. The Jaguars shrinking the lead some in the third. I love plays like this, Brock. Sometimes you just gotta ask your dude, show me what you got, man. Show off those wheels, and he did just that. Yeah, beauty in simplicity, right? Yep. Now, when you run that fly route, <laughs> you got to win right from the jump. Uh -huh. And you got to protect yourself from the sideline, too. Don't get pushed to the boundary. Give your quarterback room to throw it up, and you can find pay dirt. On his little for the extra point.
Right down the middle, it's good. And the Jaguars cut it to a field goal game. Ball is set up, and it's away. Just a three-point game now. Sims now on the return. He stopped on the return at the 27. The Texans headed back out on offense. Their quarterback returning to the field now. And you know this firsthand, partner. You get above that 300 mark, you and your offense are going to have plenty of highlights to choose from by this point in the game. We're getting a look at some of them now. You just got to marvel at how well he's played the quarterback position here. Drive will start out with a first and ten. Now it's Brown. Finding Collins. This is ahead for about five. Stopped by Foyer Oluoku. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. the shotgun a give to Mixon has a lane past the 45 and he's finally marked down at the 46 yard line it's a gain of 21 yards to pick up that first down even with everything he racked up on that run you could argue he deserved maybe a little bit more that call was the perfect one to break for big yards the only thing that saved the defense from a score was getting that contact to slow him down and eventually finally stop him New set of downs for him from the 46. First down, Stroud. Cut by the open man. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. Excellent pickup to move the chains. 36 yards in the end. Just excellent effort on that catch. And a lightning quick transition from bringing that football in to getting vertical. He was not content for a second to end that play where he caught it. Uh-uh. Any catch he makes, his intent is to put some serious yards on top of it. What a spot for a big play, huh, Brock? It has him well into the red zone now with first and ten. Running with Mixon out of the gun. And he'll get this across. Touchdown, Houston. The Texans lengthen the lead at the end of the third. It's a Joe Mixon touchdown. It's what every player who scores a touchdown wants to do, Brock. He wants to get right back there and put another six on the board. I've never met an NFL player content with one end zone trip in a game. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, if you're content, you're not making it to this league. You get one, you're instantly thinking of another, and the fortunate few are able to actually deliver on it. Fairbairn now for the PAT. The point after splits the uprights. And the Texans make it a 10-point ball game. Fairbairn has it all set up for the kickoff. Here's Duvernay on the return. And this will give them decent field position. The return gets out to the 30. First and 10 now from the 30. Counter 
again to ETN. And he found some running room for a nice game. Good run, gets him seven. That brings up second and three. A very active quarter for us. Plenty of points in that frame as we reach the end of three. It's Jaguars football. They trail, but it's still within reach. Second and three now. From the 37. He'll get this to ETN. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. Kate, that's one of those situations as a quarterback that on my grade sheet, that's a negative. That screen was ambushed by the defense, and you've got to throw it away. Just find a way to put it at his feet and not create a negative play for your offense. The Texans bringing out an extra DB. Third down coming up. That's caught for the first. On the move, past the 40. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. Give him 32 on that play. And that's a Jaguar first down. You know, Kate, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position by hitting on that shot. You've totally flipped the field in the tone of this drive. Now give this up the middle to ETN. And he's into the front for a gain of about two. You know, some positive yardage there, Kate, but just as important, they're mixing up their play calling, and they could very well be setting up the defense for a big play later. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Now we give to ETN running right. And that hit stops him in his tracks. Back-to-back -back runs yielding just two yards, and now it's third and eight. So close to a big loss of yards for those guys up front. One second sooner, and they got a tackle behind the line. But a stop to celebrate nonetheless. A less than ideal third and eight here. Trying it right side with ETN. And he stopped. Now we'll wait to hear what this flag is all about. So they'll let the play stand, decline the penalty, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Cam Little now to try the Jags field goal. It's from the right hash, 46 yards. Flying down the heart of the lane, and it's good! And it pulls him back within one score here in the fourth. His make there, they had to have that one. And it really does set up a judgment call down on the field. And this is where special teams coach and head coach are talking about game management. You've got three timeouts left, so you really can write either script you want. Onside kick or send it deep. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Sims now on the return. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. The visitors are being led back out there on offense by their quarterback. And like we've seen from him before, Brock, he got a good game going early through the air and kept the pressure up from then on. He's still taking it to him now as we work through this second half. They're out and set, first and ten. Shotgun now, first round. And he just gets rid of it. Knew he had a couple of plays left. Didn't want to take a risk there on first down. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. A give to Mixon up the middle. 
And he'll go down after pushing this up to the 29. With him three that time. That's going to bring up third and seven. Operating from the gun, it's Stroud. Dell with the grab. And he has it up towards midfield before he's taken down at the 47. They'll get 18 yards there. And the Texans are going to have a first down. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. Here's Stroud now. Has him on the quick hitter. It's a pickup of 11. And it sets up a Houston first. Kid, I can't tell you how good that is. Anticipating the outcut, having the ball on the way before the receiver's head even turns, he puts it on him so that receiver can easily get out of bounds for the nice game. They'll head up first and 10 from the 42. Here's Stroud. Escapes the pocket. He can run it. And they take him down right along the 30. 12 yards on that play and a good call nets him the first. As long as these are the results he's getting, they're going to be just fine with him calling his own number. He does such a good job of seeing the field and knowing when it's his time to take it himself. First and 10 now from the 30. Staying between the tackles with Mixon. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Kid, I'll never forget walking into the Hall of Famer Dwight Freeney's meeting room with those defensive linemen. The late, great John Tierlink, his coach, he had a little sign up in his, in his office, and it was sacks, and that money sign was the S, because ends and D linemen make their money with sacks. But you win games when they stop the run like that for a tackle for loss. And they make the tackle at the 28-yard line. It's a gain of three after the loss, but still third and eight to work with. Looking to throw. Finds Woods. And they get this down to the 12-yard line before being stopped. That's 16 on the pickup. And the Texans are going to have a first down. Good offenses. Okay, good play callers know how to utilize their personnel. They know where they wanted him. They wanted him in a route in space where he could make that initial play comfortably, but then go to work after it. He brings the offense up now for a first and 10. A handoff for Mixon, running right. Just a little short, but still a nine-yard pickup. That's going to bring up second and one. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, you will take it in the NFL. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. It's the two-minute warning here in Jacksonville. Texans feeling lucky with a seven-point lead. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. Keeping it with Mixon. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. Now just four seconds after our two-minute warning, we've got another pause. Timeout taken by the defense. A touchdown would put this one to bed. A few shots at it here, starting with first and goal. Mixon has the Houston touchdown. The Texans go up by two scores as they try to put this one away. It's a Joe Mixon touchdown, his third of the game on the ground. 
Well, Brock, you know this better than most. In baseball, it's three strikes and you're out. I know you experienced that a lot, but on the gridiron, you're feeling pretty happy, right? If you can strike the end zone three times in one game. Yeah, I'd rather go hockey and soccer. That's just a positive guy in me. They call that a hat trick. It's worth celebrating. You. And yeah, they should celebrate this effort. Fairbairn connects on the extra point. And the Texans double their lead to 14. Fairbairn has it all set up for the kickoff. Washington now to return. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. Out now runs the Jaguars' offense. And down double digits, Brock. Field goals like we saw in their last drive aren't going to move the needle as much as they need to. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. To throw. ETN on the catch. And he'll get it out to the 34 before he's tracked down. These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well. And it sure keeps a defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. Jags working fast here, trying to get back to the line. Looking to throw it. And that was probably their last gasp. It's intercepted. Jimmy Ward has it. And forget the turnover, Brock. They take it back for a late touchdown. Went to the old well one too many times, Brock. And this time, the defense was ready for it. Now, you make as many catches as he has in this game, you're going to attract some extra attention. The knew it's probably going his way in the near future, and they had somebody there waiting for it that time. Fairbairn now for the PAT. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Texans stretch their lead to 21. Well, Brock, hopefully some short memories on offense as they get it right back here on the kickoff after that pick six. Washington now to return. He stopped on the return at the 27. The Jaguars and Gabe Davis ready to go to work again offensively. And this a final opportunity to make things a little closer in that final score. They'll get this drive started, first and 10. Now Lawrence coming off a pick. Toward the sideline and he's got it. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. One play in, and this drive is already in enemy territory. On first and ten, here's Lawrence. That one's cut along the left sideline. And this one's stopped at the three-yard line. 
They rip off a big chunk of field, and it sets them up with first and goal. The analytics are pretty clear. It's hard to move the ball in this league with short little dinks and dunks. You've got to get the explosive chunk. You've got to get the big play. And that throw to the outside, that gets the job done. Getting out to his left. And he scores. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. The Jaguars get it back to within two possessions. Trevor Lawrence with the touchdown. Wow, great work there by the quarterback. The play broke down, didn't really have much of a choice other than to escape and improvise, and in the end, Brock, the best call he could have made. Yeah, and you can do it in different ways in today's NFL, right? The, the Tom Brady's just recently retired. He did it with his brain. He did it with his mind, but you've got to be able to improvise, as you said. you got to be able to create when a play breaks down, and when you can put six on the board, man, does that infuse your offensive group with confidence. That one right down the middle. And the Jaguars get it back to a 14-point game. They'll time making this all but impossible, but they're going to try for the onside kick here anyway. We're waiting for that signal, waiting. Oh, they've got it. The Jaguars recover. Ball on the 45, first and 10. Here he is to throw. That's taken in by ETN. And this is marked down right along that 40-yard line. Now the offense going to take its third and final timeout. And now they're powerless to stop that clock with a timeout at least. New slated downs to approach here from the 40. Throwing now. And he's just going to get rid of this one. Smart move there. When you saw the field, it's going to be second down. Now to throw. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And that pushes him back. Third down coming up. So the Texans come away with the road win. And partner, I know you took down plenty of division rivals in your NFL days. Heck, your conference opponents back in Washington in your college days always makes the win a little bit sweeter when it comes against a rival, doesn't it? Yeah, there's just a little bit more emotion. There just is. Yeah. I mean, you try to keep every game level, and no opponent's bigger than the other, but familiarity does breed a little more contempt, <laughs> and we could feel it today, and that's why that W is a little bit sweeter. So that's it for us here. Brock Heward, our crew, I'm Kate Scott. This has been the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we bid farewell from Jacksonville.